Hello everybody and welcome to the second video showcasing the Cambridge One CPU and for those of you who didn't quite catch the first video this is a 4-bit 7400 series based computer or CPU and even though it operates on 4-bit words can also perform 8-bit operations as well. And I thought I'd make this video just to show off a couple of the changes I've made over the last couple of weeks. The first of which is the addition of this Adafruit micro SD card module. And you can probably guess what that's for. It's for adding or enabling instructions to be loaded into the computer via an SD card, which is really handy because uh, the, the way I was originally writing code for this machine was directly in the Arduino sketch, which turned out to be a bit of a pain. So um, the addition of this SD card module means that I can write instructions in my favorite text editor, save them to a file and then upload them to this machine through this SD card when it boots up. And this was really simple to implement actually because all you need to do is, is take this, this module and hook it up to the SPI pins on the Arduino Micro. So there's a small amount of code to enable that to happen and it's a, it's a it's a it's a really neat module actually i've i've really enjoyed using it so that's the first major change and the second is the addition of a second let's call it output port here so as you can see, there are currently two output ports in there showing some 8-bit accumulation. Let's just wait for the carry. There we go. And this, again, wasn't too difficult to implement. Uh, there's some extra registers here, which are hooked up to the data bus and these blue lines are two extra control lines which are connected to the clock of the registers and feed back into the control unit or the control logic. The major change here actually was uh, adding an additional 595 uh, register here. And that was because I, I simply ran out of <laughs> available space for extra control lines. Uh, so that wasn't too, too difficult to add, really. And if you've seen the first video, you'll know that the control unit for this machine is actually virtualized in the Arduino Micro. So when I added these extra control lines, because the unit is virtualized, it was really, really easy to change the microcode to make sure that the right signals are being sent to the right pins at the precise point in time that the, is required. And extending the I.O. instruction uh, has also meant that I can add an input uh, port as well. So there's an additional register here that latches onto incoming values and these are all just connected to ground at the moment. And that means that external data can be written to the data bus. Now originally on this machine I only had a single input output port so one of the instructions in the instruction set was used for that. But now actually I've got I've got three ports and the way I've, I've coped with that in the instruction set is by effectively extending the 
input-output instruction. Now, that instruction originally wasn't utilizing the, the operand part of the instruction. So it was, it was completely redundant and was ignored by the machine when the instruction was, was called. So what I've done instead, which is a neat little trick, is that I've connected two extra control lines to the operand register. So the lower two bits connect back up to the Arduino micro into the virtualized control unit. And that means I can then extend the input output instruction. And because there's two extra bits to play with, that means I can have four extra instructions within the input instruction by defining them through the operand register. So that means if I call input output zero, it's outputting to, to this port. If I call the input output instruction with operand value one, it calls to this, and value two, it inputs from this register here. So that's the, they're the major changes to the machine. And now I've got a bit more flexibility with input and output. What I'm hoping to do is attach a LED matrix and a very simple console to the input. And I don't think it'd be too hard to replicate a very simple Tetris based or like game. So I think that's going to be the next mission for this project. So that's it. And uh, thank you for watching. If you want to find out more about the project, you can follow me on Twitter at Arith underscore Matic. And hopefully I'll be uploading a few more YouTube videos over the weeks and months. So don't forget to subscribe to this channel as well.